Hi guys, welcome back. So as you may already know, I'll be moving to Osaka soon. It's actually five days from today. So hence the, the boxes in the background, sorry about that. But in light of me moving, I wanted to kind of go through a list of things that you have to do when you move in Japan, especially when you're moving either from or to a different ward or another prefecture and this also applies to when you're leaving Japan as well. For me personally, I think it's much more complicated in Japan. When I lived in New York, I was never on a lease. I just like, found things either on Facebook or Craigslist and then when I was moving, I would just tell my roommates maybe like a month before like, hey, I'm leaving and that was it. I didn't have to do anything else, but here I'm learning as I go all of the, the things that you have to do when you move. So I have a list here that I have on my old cell phone, so don't mind me if I keep looking down to read, but one of the first things you have to do is cancel your lease. So it all depends on your rental company. I think the standard would be one month's notice, but just in case, I called my rental company two months before, and then they told me like, oh, it's too soon, like, call us one month before. So I did that, and one month before my moving date, I just went into their office and I filled out a paper to say that I was leaving. And surprisingly, there was no fee for that. So of course it will differ from company to company, but for me, there was no cancellation fee. They're charging me like a prorated amount for my last few weeks here because it, it it's not like on track with their monthly schedule so they're prorating that and then depending on how well I can clean this place by myself I might get some of my security deposit back so they when I filled out this paper they just needed to know like the reason for leaving the new address and my bank information so that they could send the refund if I get one, <laughs> please. The next thing I did, which was the most annoying, was canceling my internet. A lot of places in Japan will include internet in your rent fee, so if that's the case for you, then you're really lucky. But I had to get my internet separately through SoftBank, and it took me like a month to figure out who my internet provider was because the on the router it doesn't say SoftBank on it. So finally I just went to like my credit card statement and then I was oh it's, it's SoftBank. So I figured out how to log into their website and then tried to cancel it online because I set up the payment online but then the some like notice popped up that said oh you can only cancel it by phone call. So yeah had to call and cancel it that way. It was really annoying. And nobody has to come to my house to remove any of the devices. They should be sending me boxes soon so that I can just mail back the, the router and stuff after. But there was a cancellation fee of 9,500 yen, which is almost $100, which really sucks. The next thing, which is really, really, really important, is that two weeks before your moving date, you go to your ward office to inform them that you're leaving the ward and you have to fill out paperwork there and then they will give you this like moving slip because if you're changing wards, you can't register at the new ward unless you have the moving slip from the previous ward. So. I happened to pay my health insurance and my residence tax. So I'm not sure what would happen at the ward office if you didn't pay those things. I think if you're leaving Japan, they will probably ask you to pay for the previous year's residence tax and health insurance. But 
In my case, because I'm not leaving Japan, they can just forward the bills to the new ward office when I register there. You may or may not know this, but each ward office usually has one day a week where they're open later. So if you're working until 5 or 6 p.m. and you can't go on a normal day, you should call them and just ask if there's a day of the week that they're open later. So in my case, knock on a ward, it was, it's open later on Tuesdays until 8 p.m. So after work, I went there and I came really overprepared just in case. So when you pay bills in Japan, they like put a stamp on it just to prove that you've paid it. So I brought all of my health insurance receipts, all of the residence tax receipts, my passport, residence card, health insurance card, pay slips, and my hanko, which is like the, the stamp that has your name on it. And I was very over prepared, but I didn't want to have to go back if I was missing something. The only things I actually needed to show them were my residence card and the health insurance card. Some people get their health insurance through their company, but I got mine through the ward office, so it's just national health insurance. And I was a little bit worried that because the ward office provided me with the health insurance that they would take it away on the day I went to fill out the paperwork, but that wasn't the case. They said I can use my health insurance until my moving date and then I can just take the card with and put it in this envelope that they so kindly provided me with and mail back the health insurance card because I'll get a new one when I register at my ward in Osaka. They also told me that when I go to the new ward to register there, I need to bring my residence card the moving slip that Nakano Ward provided me with and my my number card. Oh, I think it's also worth mentioning that if you're moving within the ward, it's much easier. All you have to do is just go into your ward office and then just fill out a paper with your new address. So it's really simple. Next, you can set up address forwarding with the post office. So I just went into the post office and I asked for this sheet, which is the change of address notice. And in Japanese, it's ten kyo todo. So today I'm going to fill this one out, just my old address when I'm moving, the new address, that kind of stuff. And you just put it in the post and that's it. This was one of the easiest things. If you are a procrastinator like me, then one of the things you can hold off until the last minute is canceling your utilities. So the electricity, the water, and the gas. You can just call them to cancel it. You do need a Japanese speaker to do this, but you have two options. They can You can either make an appointment with them and they'll come to your house or apartment and kind of like measure out what the last bill would be. Then you pay it on the spot, they give you a receipt and you're done. Or your other option is to just tell them your moving date and give them your new address and they can just mail it to the new address. So I'm gonna go with the ladder and just have it sent to the new place. In the first apartment that I had in Japan, when in order for me to get my security deposit back, they needed to see the receipts that I had canceled and paid for all of my utilities. So in that case, I had to just have everybody come to my apartment so I could pay the bill and get the receipts and then that was it. But this time I don't have to do that, so I'll just get it forwarded to my new address. If you're leaving Japan, you need to cancel your cell phone contract. You can't just let the contract go until the end and just hope that that's the end of that. No, because if you don't actually tell them that you're not continuing the contract, they're, they're just going to assume that you want to renew it. So you need to 
give them notice that you're you yeah you don't want to continue the contract and there will probably be a cancellation fee for that now the last thing which I am 1000% procrastinating on is changing my address with my banks I happen to have three bank accounts because there is one bank that I like and then two of my companies wanted me to have the same bank as them so I ended up with bank accounts with three different banks so I need to change my address with all of those I'm going to try and call and do it but I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that I have to go in and physically fill out a change of address paper and then stamp it with my hankel. So I'm dreading that. I don't want to go to three banks. <laughs> Another thing I would advise you to do is to keep all of your contracts just in case. So I think it always comes in handy. Save them. So. Thank you so much for watching this probably boring but hopefully informative video about things to do when you're moving in Japan. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to my channel. Bye guys!